What then are the futures of communalism? As you would guess, the first should be pulling of resources together. And the second is every adult participates in decision making. Yes, every adult has a say. The next form is feudalism. This is the ruling of people by means of land ownership. The lords own the land and they lease it out to the serfs, the peasants who work for them. So the peasants remain under the lords. Such was a system of government practiced many, many years ago. We want to talk about the futures of this form of government, that's feudalism. One, it is authoritarian. Of course, the serfs who work under the lords would only live according to the dictates of the Lord. And again, it is exploitative. The lords have a tendency to exploit those working for them, that is the peasants or the serfs. Another future of feudalism is that the lords exercise rights and the peasant class who are known as vassals would simply sheepishly obey. Well, there are merits which means advantages of this feudal system of government. The first is that it creates social order. The laws are on top and the serfs are below and that is how it goes. So that social order is maintained. So there is this strong sentiment of personal loyalty to the possession of land. People held on to their land. Of course, since it's a factor of production and of course a means of living. The second merit of a feudal system is that it fosters decentralization of powers among big lords. Because of course, each lord possesses a land and of course leads out this land to the peasants. The next merit of the feudal system of government is that it fosters self-reliance and love of personal independence. The feudal system is not without the merits. One, it is exploitative. Two, it is oppressive. The next is capitalism. This is a system of government where the means of production and distribution of wealth are situated in the hands of a few individuals. Nigeria, for instance, and the United States of America, the next instance. Futures of feudalism. The guiding principle of feudalism is to make profits. That is it. The next is that the means of production and distribution are in the hands of a few private individuals. And thirdly, the rich become richer in a capitalist state while the poor remain poor. Or even get poorer. Now we shall be talking about the differences between capitalism and socialism. In a capitalist state, like I have said earlier, the means of distribution and production of goods and services is owned by a few private individuals. But in a socialist state, it is owned by a state and not by a few private individuals. In a capitalist state, wealth is in the hands of a few individuals. But in a socialist state, wealth is equitably distributed among the people. Now, merits of capitalism. One, it stimulates competition among individuals and organizations. Since individuals and organizations are allowed to run their businesses, they would have to come up with gimmicks to make their businesses work. So everyone is on their toes, so competition is stimulated. The second merit is that the government can step in at any point in time to protect the weak ones in a capitalist state. The merit, it is exploitative. It exploits the masses. Again, wealth, like we have said, is left in the hands of a few individuals since it is not equitably distributed among the masses. The next system of government we shall be talking about is socialism. It is a system of government where the means of production and distribution is controlled by the community or, if you like, the state. Unlike capitalism. 
than the futures of socialism. The means of production and distribution are controlled by the community. Again, it refers to equality and justice. And finally, land and capital are owned by the state. Next is merits of socialism. First, it bridges the gap between the poor and the rich because the state manages and controls the distribution of wealth so the rich do not get richer while keeping the poor poorer. Secondly, socialism gives all citizens a sense of belonging since everyone is one way or the other seen as equal and wealth equitably distributed. The third merit of socialism is that it prevents the concentration of wealth in the hands of a few. So wealth is equitably distributed. So one could say that a socialist state is a state where egalitarianism is advocated. We shall not talk about the merits of socialism. It gives initiative. That's the first one. In a capitalist state, like we said earlier, that is a healthy competition. People think about how to make their businesses progress. But in a socialist state where wealth is distributed, means of distribution, controlled by the state, there is a tendency to become pleasant and self-satisfied, knowing that the government takes care of one's need. So it kills initiative. Secondly, it kills healthy competition. The next form of government we shall be looking at is oligarchy. It is a government ruled by the privileged people. The features of oligarchy, I'm going to talk about just one feature. And that is, few persons are involved in rulership. Types of oligarchy, we have theocracy, that is the government by the priests. We have aristocracy, that is the government by noble people. And plutocracy, government by rich individuals. The next is communism. Now, this is not communalism, but what? Communism. This is an extreme form of socialism. We have said that socialism is a system of government where the means of production and distribution is in the hand of the state. But now, communism in a, is an extreme form of this form of government, that's socialism. Why? Because everything in the state is owned and controlled by the state. The state shares these resources according to individual needs. We shall now be looking at the origin and development of this system of government socialism. It originated from Karl Marx's writings. It is based on the concept of class struggle within the society. For Karl Marx, there is a constant struggle in the society between the people they refer to as the bourgeoisie and the proletariats. Uh, and the proletariats are the peasants, the poor, while the bourgeoisie are the rich in the society. Of course, he referred to them as the thesis and the antithesis. The antithesis are the group of people constantly in a struggle with the thesis, that's those who have, to reach a point Karl Marx refers to as synthesis. The principles of communism. One, all men shall live abundantly. One shall not live more abundantly than the other. Next is the equitable distribution of wealth. Wealth will be equitably distributed among members of the state and the society. The next is a classless society. A society where everyone is equal and egalitarian society. Next is relationship between socialism and both socialism and communism are political theories political and economic theories. Again, in both socialism and communism, means of production and distribution are owned and controlled by the state. Again, is advocating of egalitarian and egalitarian society, a society without class. The next form of government we shall be considering